Good day, brothers and sisters, and uh, I'm so thankful that uh, the Lord has uh, granted us another opportunity to be able to listen to His Word, and uh, it has been a journey that uh, we have been running on. We have been looking at uh, a 21-part series of uh, the latter rain and uh, I'm glad that uh, we are coming to the last presentation I know that uh, you have gathered enough information if you have not then uh, go back to the presentations as from tomorrow already there are some uh, that I have uploaded in the on our YouTube channel gospel sounders I'll be putting on my timeline the link to the whole series but there are some which have been uploaded so far and I'm working on the others but by tomorrow everything will be there so that you can download and uh, you can view at your own time and uh, be blessed by the presentations otherwise this is uh, the last presentation I'm doing on uh, the latter rain series and then I take a break from the Facebook uh, to be able to concentrate on uh, uh, the website and upload more materials there so that uh, the children of God may have enough materials and also I'll be doing the work of uh, distributing uh, printed out materials so I know that the Lord will uh, continue being with us I'll uh, leave you with enough information if uh, you want to contact me on my email, on Messenger, or uh, on the website so that uh, we may continue keeping in touch and uh, attending to the needs of the children of God and uh, unto our spiritual affairs so that we may be prepared for the second coming of the Lord. Otherwise, this is the last presentation that I'm making so far on this latter end series. There's a lot of materials to cover. Um, I'll encourage you to watch this latter end series presentation why I was working on uh, four series that is um, I was working on the book of Romans the book of Hebrews the three angels messages and then I was working on the latter end series and uh, the Lord embraced me to put up this series first before the other series so that uh, uh, we may know where we are coming from and uh, where we are going and so I'm so glad that uh, he has given us enough information we have just scratched the surface that is uh, building blocks and uh, foundation for even propelling you to go and search the scriptures look into your Bibles what the Word of the Lord says so that uh, you may be helped uh, this series that uh, this last presentation is um, revelation of the character of God in Isaiah chapter 58 this being uh, I call it the loud cry to the seventh day Adventist church this is the loud cry to the seventh day Adventist church and uh, much of what I'm going to present I'm just going to build on what um, I presented on in uh, number seven in this series that is the works of atonement number eight the important things and number nine the beginning of the loud cry so uh, I'll put all these three together and give uh, a, a short uh, 
presentation on Isaiah chapter 58 but uh, largely I have gathered I, I have uh, I have presented this on number 7 8 and 9 in this series which, which you can view on my timeline or on YouTube link that uh, I'll be able to put up there on my timeline after I finish this and so uh, I thank you so much uh, the people who have uh, been involved in um, making sure that uh, we have the bundles enough to stream we have the bundles enough to uh, uh, to, to upload the materials on our website and uh, uh, to put it on our YouTube channel uh, thank you so much uh, brother Daniel Mesa and uh, thank you so much um, the family of uh, uh, Mr. and Miss uh, Jim Nyaga we we know a lot of Naomi or Mumbu Amsioka and uh, they have been so instrumental thank you so much for gospel sounders providing with the, the necessary uh, help that they have helped me with to produce this series uh, brother weekly for providing the finances for the materials to be uploaded and all that stuff uh, also uh, I thank brother Zado who is the leader of the gospel sounders rekindling reformation ministry uh, uh, for all the prayers that uh, you guys have put in thank you also brother Kore McKin and uh, Scott Moore for your continued prayers and support financially and all that uh, you are putting in so that um, we may be able to reach unto the many people and uh, may the Lord bless everyone that is involved in uh, helping the gospel sounders ministry uh, to make sure that it is proclaiming the word of God all over the four corners of the world and uh, everyone that is involved in this uh, before I, I, I want to uh, go to the presentation uh, I just like to urge us that uh, let us try to do personal evangelism yes I'm a victim of this I have been on Facebook for so long I know God has used me the way that uh, he had wanted to use me on Facebook and uh, putting up the materials there and uh, doing all this stuff and uh, some research work and uh, having an experience with the children of God and uh, it goes beyond that just being on Facebook and uh, spreading the gospel to people who don't know you and uh, sharing information with other people uh, Christ was a social person he did personal evangelism he said in fact we are told that Christ method alone will bring true success he mingled with the people and then uh, as if he desired to know about their whereabouts and their needs and then he supplied their needs and then he bid them to come uh, when you interact with the people personally and uh, I have been trying to do this for like uh, one month ago uh, for one month I have been uh, uh, trying to give the people material face to face and uh, see how they respond to it. it it's so different unlike when they just read it on Facebook or you send them an email or such a like stuff I used to do the work of uh, uh, spreading the material in the in the vehicle while I used to travel and work uh, in the cyber in Rwanda and uh, I saw how people could respond to when you give them the material directly in their hands how they respond is so different with how they'll respond when actually they read it online or you send them an email and so uh, I tend to think that uh, personal evangelism is so effective not that because I'm resuming it but it is something that I have tested uh, in 2015 I was so much involved in having personal evangelism spreading the material in the vehicles and all that carrying boxes and uh, giving the people great controversy coming personally to the people and uh, it builds a relationship more than just social networks when you come in contact with the people it builds relationship they uh, develop trust in you and uh, I think uh, uh, Christ method as it said in uh, MH uh, Ministry of Healing page 143 is so effective than um, just being on social I'm not saying that being on the social network is bad it is a good tool in spreading information uh, I can't tell somebody to leave social network if they are doing the the work of spreading the the gospel but um, uh, it will be more to come in co conduct like do today evangelism uh, spreading tracks like autumn leaves this is the work that we have to do 
we are told that uh, the tracks are leaving voices where the preacher could not do some work or cannot reach uh, the people and so i believe this is good i tried it in 2015 it worked and uh, uh, uh I just wonder with the what the Lord has blessed me with uh, the machine, the printer, so that I may try to print out materials and circulate. Uh, I hear people giving me responses of how the material are benefiting them, and uh, this is good. Uh, I can't forget to thank Brother Paul Chung, who also has been uh, so instrumental and in, uh, his research work and uh, his financial help too, and all this stuff. Sister Sharon going, we. Praise the Lord for all these things, uh, and uh, I know that uh, the Lord will continue blessing you guys and your families. And uh, those that I have not named, it doesn't mean that um, you are, uh, your help has not been that essential. Brother Setemel from South Africa, Hobata, may the Lord bless you and the people you are involved there in the ministry. And uh, may the Lord continue expanding your ministries and uh, continue guiding you in everything that... Um, you do in uh, the gospel campaign otherwise i want to enter into the presentation of today which is the book of isaiah chapter 58 and uh, uh, i know that i will be blessed welcome morgan omodia and uh, may the lord be with you and bless you as we listen to this presentation uh, we learn together have your bible have your bible have a place to write and uh, I always say this, and I repeated it yesterday, that uh, don't just listen to what somebody is saying. Don't listen to me. Take your Bible, take your notebook, see that whatever that is being presented is truth and not error. And to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, there is no light in them, there is no dawn, there is no morning, there is no resurrection. And so, if it is not the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, if it is suppositions, reject it. You don't have to accept it. And so, welcome. And uh, I want us to pray as we begin this presentation and uh, give the Lord thanks for everything that he has given unto us, the good weather, the, 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 the deal of the latter rain. We have to thank the Lord. Many people cannot see it, but the Lord is doing something to his church. So, let us uh, actually seek the Lord in prayer. Abba Father in heaven, I thank you for this platform of Facebook, Lord, for spreading the truth. But you are calling us to a higher experience, Lord, to have a personal relationship with thee. Not only, Father, to write things, but uh, to reach unto the hearts of the people wherever they are and whatsoever they are doing. Lord, I do pray that as we go through this last presentation of the series of the latter rain, that you will be with us. Fortify our minds with the scriptures, that it may be a bulwark against the powers of the evil that we may not sin against thee. And so bless the children. I pray that you may be with the night work as we do this, that uh, there may not be buffering, uh, that the children may be benefited by the information that we are going to share. And so take charge and may the angels that excel in strength surround this place and the light from heaven shine upon us, that we may be able to comprehend what the Spirit is speaking to the churches. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, I believe this is uh, one of the most important presentations of this time as we prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ, as we prepare for sounding the loud cry, as the Lord seals up his people and the number is made up so that um, the children of God may be able to do a work that has never been done before. The experience we need right now is the experience of Jesus Christ. And I, I'm going to share some practical things that um, are the prerequisite uh, of uh, having or receiving the latter rain and being able to finish the work that is before us. And so uh, I'll start with the, a familiar text because we are looking at Isaiah chapter 58. I'll start with a very familiar text that um, we know of, the book of uh, James chapter 1 verses 27 the book of James chapter 1 verses 27 and this is what the Bible says pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in the affliction 
and to keep himself unspotted from the world. This is the pure religion that the Lord says is undefiled before him. This is the work of Isaiah chapter 58. Another verse that we can look is um, the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4 verses 18. Luke chapter 4 verses 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and covering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach their acceptable year of the Lord. And uh, still uh, talking about this, the Lord anointing us with the Holy Spirit and preaching the gospel to the poor, uh, not only poor in spirit but also poor physically. We look at the book of Acts, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 10, I believe, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 10, and this is verses uh, 38, <clears throat> that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so the reason and the main purpose of god anointing his son with the holy spirit was to go about doing good not to seek self but seek the benefiting of the others in fact um, when we read philippians chapter 2 this is what is revealed from verse 4 it says look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you which will also which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no repetition and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as man he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death even the death of cross so look not every man <coughs> sorry on his own things but every man also on the things of others this is the religion that we are being called on the reason why christ later was exalted to the highest position it is because he never looked at his own things he never cared about himself he cared about others also christ talking to his disciples i believe it is in the book of luke let me see if i can find it the the book of luke while the disciples were just telling to where the disciples were talking about who is to be the greatest in the kingdom. Christ told them, uh, them something. Uh, Luke chapter 9 verses 46. Uh, Luke chapter 9 verses 46 we read that... Uh, then there arose reasoning among them which of them should be the greatest. And then uh, in another place, uh, in 22, he tells them now. Uh, in, from verses 24. We are talking about the practical way of living that will usher in or will make the lord anoint you so that you may be able to sound the loud cry this is a look at, at the book of isaiah chapter 58 and there was also a strife among them which of them should be accounted the greatest and he said unto them the kings of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors but you shall not be so but that is greatest among you let him be as the younger and he that is chief as he doth serve and so 
he tells them, if you will be the greatest in the kingdom of God, your work is to serve, your work is not to lord over others. And this is the work that Christ is calling us unto, so that we may be anointed also. This is the very reason that the Lord wants to put his Holy Spirit on us. He is testing us if we can die to self and be able to serve others rather than sit and be served. This is the greatest trial that can ever come to Christian, the people who profess Christianity. We are looking at the last presentation on the Lateran series. This is the last message of mercy in Isaiah chapter 58. And so uh, we are told in, uh, in Testimonies to the Church, volume 9, page 13, paragraph 4. Testimonies to the Church. Testimonies to the Church, volume 9, page 13, paragraph 4. The scripture describes the condition of the world just before Christ's second coming, of the men who by robbery and extortion are amassing great riches. It is written, Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold the high of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, which is of you kept by back by fraud and cried. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton, you have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have not, you have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. So, the, the the idea of oppression, the idea of not wanting the goodwill of others, and we are not talking about capitalism. We are talking about Isaiah 58, how Christ was anointed and he went about doing good, and that is the same thing that the Lord wants to do to us we are to care about others more than we care ourselves. Several have written to me inquiring if the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message. And I have answered it is the third angel's message in verity. Now I, I link Isaiah chapter 58 with the message of justification by faith and it is so beautiful. First, when I saw this first in the year 2012, I was so glad to know that Isaiah chapter 58 which is the medical missionary arm, the medical missionary work is the right arm of the third angel's message and you cannot separate them. When Kellogg tried to separate the medical missionary work and the gospel work, he said that, that the prophet said that is the worst evil that can ever happen to the church. And so justification by faith, which is the third angel's message, cannot sound forth without the right arm, which is the medical missionary work. This is why we are looking at the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. She continues, The message of Christ's righteousness is to sound from one end of the earth to the other, to prepare the way of the Lord. This is the glory of God which closes the work of the third angel message. And what shall be uh, uh, the work that will cause the impetus to the third angel's message? It is the medical missionary work. It is the medical missionary work, the work of Isaiah, chapter 58. Those who wait for the bridegroom coming are to say to the people, Behold your God. The last race of merciful life, the last message of mercy to be given to the world, is a revelation of his character of love. Christ did not seek self. Christ came to benefit others, and we live to benefit others. And this is the work that is in Isaiah chapter 58. It's a description of of what is the right arm of the third angel's message. This is the practical work. The children of God are to manifest his glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. The light of the Son of Righteousness is to shine forth in good works. Do you see that? The work of Isaiah 58 is a work of good works in words of truth and deeds of holiness. And there is no other work in fact, we started with James chapter 1, verse 27, which says that pure religion and undefiled is this, to visit the orphans, the widows, and the fatherless, and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. And so, the third angel's message, which is justification by faith, is to reveal if we are having the love of Christ in us, and how is it revealed? In going forth in righteousness to shine forth in good works. 
and if you want to know the good works that we are talking about i talk in detail about this in number seven of this series which is entitled the works of atonement and number eight the important things and number nine the beginning of the loud cry go watch this and i go in details about these things in isaiah chapter 58 and she says in uh, manuscript 36 1897 the whole chapter is applicable to those who are living in this period of the earth history consider this chapter attentively for it will be fulfilled in which period in the time period of the third angel's message because it is the right arm of the third angel's message which is justification by faith the people represented in isaiah 58 this is 4 bc 1148.9 the people represented in isaiah 58 complain that the lord allows their services to go unnoticed this complaint is the expression of hearts unsubdued by grace rebellious against the truth those who receive the truth which works by love and purifies the soul are loyal to God, honoring him by obedience to his law, which is holy, just and good. The spirit of true fasting and prayer is the spirit which yields mind, heart and will to God. And so they say that we have fasted, but you have not heard us. And he says that is this the fast that I have anointed? In fact, because we are talking about Isaiah 58, I like to refer you to Isaiah 58 right now so that you may understand what we are talking about the book of Isaiah 58 let us see from verse 2 Isaiah 58 from verses 2 this is what the word of the Lord says Cry aloud, spare not. I start from verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore? Have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. He continues to say, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? So which fast have, I, uh, have you chosen, O Lord? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and acceptable day to the Lord? Isaiah 58 is in the context of the uh, Feast of the Trumpet and the Feast of the Day of Atonement. And when you look at it, the Day of Atonement, the work was to fast, to afflict your soul, and to offer an offering by fire. And so, in Isaiah 58, which is in the time period of the third angel's message, which is in the day of atonement, these people are saying, we have afflicted our soul. We have fasted. We have offered a, a, a sacrifice by fire. But the Lord asked them, is this the fast I have uh, actually appointed? Is this what you should be doing from 1844 to 2020? Can you fast for such a long period? Can you afflict your soul for such a long time? If you will say that you have been fasting, then this is what you shall do. He says, the fast I have chosen is this. Verse 6, is it not the fast that I have chosen? And what is it, Lord, to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast up to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth, then shall the latter rain break forth, the Holy Spirit, as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak vanity. And then he talks about the proclaiming of the Sabbath more fully. These are the things that will have 
uh, us do so that the Sabbath may be proclaimed fully unto the world. The work of Isaiah chapter 58. And so going back to the presentation, PowerPoint slides, we are told that um, the spirit of true fasting and prayer is the spirit which yields mind, heart, and will to God. The people of whom the prophet spoke made a high profession of piety and pointed to their fasting and to other external forms and evident of their piety. But their deeds were attended by the leprosy of what? Selfishness and covetousness. They had nothing except that which had first received from God. He bestowed his goods on them that they might be his helping hand, doing what Christ would do were he in their place, giving a true representation of the principles of heaven. But they did not do this. And so, the work of Isaiah 58, imagine, I, I, I want you to realize again one thing about the work of Isaiah 58. It is also mentioned in the book of Matthew chapter 25. And you know very well the book of Matthew chapter 25 is about um, the five foolish virgins and the five wise, the ten virgins. And so, take, take keenly what Isaiah chapter 58 is saying and what is spoken of the five wise virgins in the book of Matthew chapter 25. It says from verse 31. I'll read in your presence. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the gods. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the gods on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why, O Lord? For I was unangered, and you gave me meat. Isaiah 58, to give food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, to loose the bands of those who are oppressed, and those who are in you. Naked, and you closed me. Is this not a fast that I have, uh, that I have anointed, that when you see a naked person, you clothe him? The work of Isaiah 58 is the same work coming, under the five wise virgins i was sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came unto me then shall the righteous under him saying lord when we when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee 39 uh, or when saw we sick or in prison and come came unto thee and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Now, it talks about the thirst, the hungry, the naked, those in prison. The same things that have been mentioned in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. He says, is not this the fast that I have chosen for six, to lose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? So, in this day of atonement, when people are saying they are fasting, they are afflicting their souls. They are directed to the work of Isaiah chapter 58, which is the right arm of the third angel's message, which is justification by faith. And she was asked, tell us about this message that we hear about justification. And she says that justification by faith is the third angel's message in verity. So the medical missionary work is part of the third angel's message in verity. It is part of the work of the wise the five wise virgins. Do you see that connection? And uh, I pray that the Lord may continue teaching us in these things. And so, continued on. We find that uh, <clears throat> this is what we read. The piety and advanced spiritual knowledge and growth of a church is proportionate to the zeal, piety, and missionary intelligence that has been brought into it and carried out 
of it to be a blessing to the very ones who need our assistance the most. Again, I urge you to consider Isaiah 58, which opens a wide and extensive vineyard to be worked upon the lines which the Lord has pointed out. In fact, when I'll be finishing, I'll be able to tell you or show you why actually uh, the, the children of Israel went into captivity for 70 years. I'll be able to show you from uh, uh, what is written in uh, 2 BC 10.40.5. <clears throat> so, when this is done, the work of medical missionary work, um, there will be an increase of moral sources and the church will no more remain almost stationary. There will be blessing and power attending their labor. The selfishness that has bound up their soul they have overcome and now their light is being given to the world in clear bright rays, rays of a living faith and godly example. The Lord has his promises for all who will do his requirements. 4 BC 1148.7 Helping the needy world. All around us are heard the wells of world sorrow. On every hand are the need and distress. It is our hours to aid in relieving and softening life's hardship and misery. Most of Christians have been taught that their work is just to go to church and come out of it and the work is left to the pastors and the clergy. But no, brothers and sisters, the reason we are so idle is because we have not taken up the work of Isaiah chapter 58 as laity, as clergy, and as the people who have been called by God. Practical work will have far more effect than mere sermonizing. This is reflecting Christ, page 233, paragraph 3. We are to give food to the hungry, clothing to the naked, and shelter to the homeless. And we are called to do more than this. The ones of the soul, only the love of Christ can satisfy. If Christ is abiding in us, our hearts will be full of divine sympathy. The sealed fountains of earnest Christ-like love will be unsealed. There are many from whom hope have departed, has departed. Bring back the shine sun to them. Many have lost their courage. Speak to them words of cheer. Pray for them. There are those who need the bread of life. Read to them from the word of God. Upon many is a soul sickness which no earthly balm can reach nor physical physician heal. Pray for these souls. Bring them to Jesus. Tell them that there is a balm in Gilead and a physician there. RC 233.5 Oh, if all who have a knowledge of truth will only obey the teaching of his truth, why is it that men standing on the very threshold of eternal world are so blinded? There is not a dearth of means, generally speaking, among Seventh-day Adventists, but many Seventh-day Adventists fail to realize the responsibility which rests upon them to cooperate with God and Christ for the saving of souls. They do not show forth to the world the great interest God has in sinners. They do not make the most of the opportunities granted to them. The leprosy of selfishness has taken hold of the church. The Lord Jesus Christ will heal the church of this terrible disease if she will be healed. The remedy is found in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. This is Review and the Herald, December 10, 1901. We are looking at the presentation, uh, the last message of mercy in Isaiah 58, which is the right arm of the third angel's message, which is justification by faith. Medical missionary work is the right hand of the gospel. It is necessary to the advancement of the cause of God. As through it men and women are led to see the importance of right habits of living, the saving power of the truth will be made known. Every city is to be ended by workers trained to do medical missionary work. As the right hand of the third angel's message, God's method of treating disease will be open doors for the entrance of present truth. And talking about medical missionary work, some people have turned it into a business. And you, you, you will find even Seventh-day Adventists are doing this for money, where actually Jesus healed free. And you will be sent quotes after quotes that we have to charge so that to sustain the place. But it is to sustain, not to do business. I agree with the quotes that Sister White puts outside there. Yes, the electricity has to be paid. And if we were doing a diligent work and having solar panels, no electricity will be paid. The workers have to be paid because they have to buy soap and clothes. If we were having our sewing machines and the materials for making our soaps, we wouldn't buy them. And other things have to be done. And I'm not against actually a charge on the work that is being done because 
even the electric uh, uh, the petrol to uh, prepare the herbal medication is to be bought but let us not turn medical missionary into a business brothers and sisters christ did not do such a work let us pray that the lord will show us the simplest means to use by faith in fact when you pray a person will be healed because the gift of the healing will be there in the end time i want you to get it so clearly the gift of healing will be there in the end time but it will not be done as the devil does his counterfeit miracles or as jesus did in his days just telling somebody your sins are forgiven or you are healed go away no the gift of the healing will be exercised in the sanctified medical missionaries in that the simple natural remedies they will use through their um, uh, uh, diligent prayer through their outpouring heart to god through their sanctified life the healing will pass through these things and they'll be able to effect in the people who are sick and this is how the lord will work so the gift of the healing is there but where are the sanctified medical missionary workers there is no gift that will miss in the church of god in the end times all the gifts are there but they are being suppressed because the people are not sanctified for the work that they have been called to do there are sins of this same character among us today that is selfishness and covetousness and they bring the rebuke of god upon his church Wherever such a sins are found, seasons of fasting and prayer are indeed necessary, but they must be accompanied with sincere, repentant, and decided reformation. Without such a condition of soul, these seasons only increase the guilt of the wrongdoer. The Lord has specified the fast he has chosen, the one he will accept. It is that which bears fruit to his glory in repentance, in devotion, in true piety. Isaiah 58 quoted verse 6 and verse 7. And so, uh, this thing of selfishness and covetousness, uh, I don't know if I can trace something um, that uh, the prophet of the Lord was shown some time in the early visions uh, about uh, uh, about the sin of uh, covetousness about the sin of covetousness I'm sorry that I, I didn't put this in the slide but uh, let me try to trace it and uh, show unto you when the ledger books of heaven were opened, what happened? Uh, oh no. This are... A portion he she talks about why so many Seventh Day Adventists missed heaven. Just for a moment. It is in FLB, but I, I like to trace it somewhere also. So I'll just read what is in uh, 40, how, how many Seventh-day Adventists missed heaven. Is it 14? Yes, 40 from page 384. 40, page 484. Uh, why most 
Adventist missed heaven. This is a long story, but nonetheless, I'll have to read it. The chapter on uh, judgment. I'd like to apologize for that uh, long delay. It is in forty three eighty four. It says, <clears throat> On the morning of October 23, 1879, about two o'clock, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon me, and I beheld sins in the coming judgment. Language fails me in which to give an adequate description of the things which passed before me and of the effect they had upon my mind. Remember, we are talking about the work of Isaiah chapter 58, the last message of mercy to the world, the third angel's message in verity, justification by faith, which is its right arm, its medical missionary work. And what has prevented it is selfishness and covetousness. And so this is the scene of judgment in uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume 4, page 384 and how many how adventists were lost the great day of the execution of god's judgment this is not investigative but the execution of judgment seems to have come ten thousand times ten thousand were assembled before a light throne upon which was seated a person of majestic appearance several books were before him and upon the covers of each was written in letters of gold which seemed like a burning flame of fire ledger of heaven one of these books containing the names of those who claim to believe the truth was then opened. Immediately I lost sight of the countless millions about the throne, and only those who were professedly children of the light and of the truth engaged my attention. This is reformers, present truth preachers, and Seventh-day Adventists who know the third angel's message. The prophetess lost sight of the countless millions, and her eye turned to the Seventh-day Adventists. As these persons were named one by one and their good deeds mentioned, their countenance would light up with a holy joy that was reflected in every direction. But this did not seem to rest upon my mind with greatest force. She continues. Another book was opened wherein were recorded the sins of those who professed the truth. Under the general heading of selfishness came every other sin. There were also headings of, of, of over every column and under Underneath this, opposite each name were recorded in their respective columns the lesser sins. Under covetousness came falsehood, theft, robbery, fraud, avarice. Under ambition came proud, pride and extravagance. Jealousy stood at the head of malice, envy and hatred and intemperance headed a long list of fearful crimes such as lasciviousness, adultery, indulgence of animal passions it is as i beheld i was filled with inexpressible anguish and ex exclaimed who can be saved who will stand justified before god whose robes are spotless who are faultless in the sight of a pure and holy god as the holy one as the holy one upon the throne slowly turned the leaves of the ledger and his eyes rested for a moment upon individuals his glance seemed to burn into their very souls and at the same moment every word and action of their lives passed before their minds as clearly as though traced before their vision in letters of fire trembling seized them and their faces turned pale their first appearance when uh, around the throne was that of careless indifference but how changed their appearance now the feeling of security is gone and in its place is a nameless terror. A dread is upon every soul, lest he shall be found among those who are wounded. Every eye is riveted upon the face of one who 
upon the throne and is solemn searching eye sweeps over that company. There is quaking of heart, for they are self-condemned without one word being uttered. In anguish of soul, each declares his own guilt and with terrible vividness sees that by sinning he has thrown away the precious boon of eternal life. And so, if we will not hold the work, we are told that what is preventing the work is this. Look at what she says is preventing the work. It is the leprosy of selfishness has taken hold of the child. And you see that, uh, go back to 14, we are told, uh, that under, let me zoom this in, so that you may be able to see what the prophet is speaking to the church. She says that um, the leprosy of selfishness has taken hold of the church. And then we are told again in 40, under the general heading of selfishness came every other sin. So the lack of doing the work of uh, Isaiah chapter 58 puts us in a strange ledger in the heavenly records. These sins have marred our characters. The Lord has chosen a fast where actually many should be benefited. As Christians, we are to have a righteousness that shall be developed and seen, a righteousness that represents the character of Jesus Christ when he was in the world. So in Isaiah chapter 58, we are given the characters, uh, the characteristics of those who shall be reformers. In fact, I have to read this. Uh, as zoo, uh, I have to put it on the screen so you see it. Review and Herald, October 13, 1891. Let us read together. It says, in Isaiah, that is Isaiah 58. Here are given the characteristics of those who shall be reformers, who will bear the burn of the third angel's message, those who avow themselves, avow themselves God's commandment keeping people, and who honor God and are honestly engaged in the sight of all the universe, in building up the old west places. Isaiah 58. Who is that calls them? The repairers of the bridge, the restorers of paths dwell in. It is God. Their names are registered in heaven as reformers, restorers, as raising foundations of many generations. So, uh, simply, then you cannot call yourself a reformer if you are not doing the work of Isaiah chapter 58. Do you realize that? That you cannot actually call yourself a reformer while you are not doing the work of Isaiah chapter 58. Because Isaiah 58 uh, outlines the work of the reformers. Everywhere the souls are afflicted. The 58th chapter of Isaiah is a prescription for maladies of the body and the soul. And they are to be supplied, not by angels, but by men, whom God has given them everything they need. Then their light will rise from obscurity. How? By helping others, they themselves will be helped out of their difficulties. The, uh, um, the formula for self-preserving -preser uh, uh, is giving out to others. And so as we approach the end time, uh, let us know that there is a wide and extensive field and vineyard to work. The, work. the church has to increase and the selfishness that has bound them, it has to be overcome so that the bright rays of living faith and godly example may be able to be seen in their lives as we see it in 4 BC 1148.8. Uh, I'll project it. It says this, that uh, the selfishness that has bound up their souls, they have to overcome. And now their light is being given to the world in clear, bright rays of living faith and godly example. This is Revelation 18.1. The Lord has his promise for all who will do his requirement. Uh, Revelation 18.1 and Isaiah chapter 60. And so we are to shine to the world. Read Isaiah 58. Ye who claim to be the children of light, especially do you read it again and again, who have felt so reluctant to inconvenience yourself by favoring the needy. You whose hearts and houses are too narrow to make a home for the homeless. Read it. You who can see orphans and widows oppressed by the iron hand of poverty and bowed down by hard-hearted worldlings. Read it. 
Are you afraid that an influence will be introduced into your family that will cost you more labor? Read it. Your fears may be groundless and a blessing may come, known and realized by you every day. But if otherwise, if extra labor is called for, you can draw up upon one who has promised, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily. The reason why God's people are not more spiritual minded and have not more faith, I have been shown, is because they are narrowed up with selfishness. The prophet is addressing Sabbath keepers, not sinners, not unbelievers, but those who make great pretensions to godliness. It is not the abundance of their meetings that God accepts. It is not the numerous prayers, but the right doing, doing the right thing and at the right time. It is to be self caring and more benevolent. It is to be less self-caring and more benevolent. Our souls must expand, then God will make them like a watered garden whose waters fail not. It means that the Holy Spirit is flowing. Christ Object Lesson, page 370, paragraph 1. The Lord says, Sell ye, sell that ye have and give arms. Luke 12:33. Be ready to distribute, willing to communicate. 1 Timothy 6, 8. When thou maketh a feast, call the poor, the maim, the lame, the blind. Luke 14, 13. Loose the bands of the wickedness, and do the heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke, deal thy bread to the hungry. Bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. When thou seest the naked, cover him. Satisfy the afflicted. Isaiah 58, 6, 7 to 10. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. These are the Lord's commands. Are the great body of professed Christians doing this work? I blush to say no. When it is made plain that the Lord expects them as his representative to relieve suffering of humanity, many will respond and will give off their means and their sympathies for the benefit of the poor. People have been afraid to go outside there and do the work because they think that there is no means. But the prophet is saying that when we uh, give ourselves to do these works, means shall come. The Lord owns a thousand bulls in the hills. Have you ever fed our Lord? And if he owns gold and silver and gold shall be dust upon our feet in the new city, new Jerusalem, why is it that the Lord, what is it that the Lord cannot give unto us? As their minds are thus drawn away from their own selfish interest, many will surrender themselves to Christ. With their talents of influence and means, they will be gladly unite in the work of beneficence with the humble mission who was God's agent in their conversion. By a right use of their earthly treasures, they will lay up for themselves a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief ap approacheth, neither moth corrupted. We are coming to an end. Constant self-denying benevolence is God's remedy for conquering sins of selfishness and covetousness. Now, think about a minute. The, the whole battle that has been going on is the battle of self-worship, selfishness. This is something that we have to overcome so that holiness may be able to take place. And for the holiness to be, uh, 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 to be consumed in our life, then we must be able to be able to be willing to give out give out what give out in love we should be able to give out in love to be able to conquer selfishness so selfishness is the greatest impediment to the spreading of the third angel's message and it is the remedy for the conquering of sins of selfishness, giving, self-denying. God has arranged systematic benevolence to sustain his cause and relieve the necessities of the suffering and need. He has ordained that giving should become a habit that it may counteract the dangerous and sinful sin of covetousness. Continual giving starves covetousness to death. Systematic benevolence is a design in the order of God to tear away treasures from the covetous as fast as they are gained and to consecrate them to the Lord to whom they belong. And so, this is what uh, I like to say, that um, in order to be happy, we must strive to attain to the character which Christ exhibited. One marked peculiarity of Christ was his self-denial and benevolence. 
he came not to seek his own he went about doing good and this was his meat and drink we may by following the example of the savior be in a holy communion with him and in daily seeking to imitate his character and follow his example we shall be a blessing to the world and shall secure for ourselves contentment here and eternal reward here after review and herald january 18 1887 paragraph 6 um, uh, 16. brothers and sisters we have to slay self and uh, it is only Christ abiding in our heart that uh, we shall be able to do this. When Christ start abiding in our heart fully, we shall be able to conquer selfishness. And so, uh, let us reread and read again the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 58 and see how we are missing out in the right arm of the third angel's message. In closing, uh, I told you I'll tell you why the children of Israel went into captivity. This is 2 BC 1040.5. 2 BC 1040.5. This is uh, uh, commenting on uh, Second Chronicles chapter 25, verse 9. why Israelites went into captivity. Uh, why Israel went into captivity. I'll highlight it and then read it to you. So, let us read together. Second Chronicles chapter 25, verse 9. Why did Israel go into captivity? Why will we go into captivity and never return? Because the captivity that is coming is to lose heaven. Uh, why did the Lord permit Jerusalem to be destroyed by fire the first time? Why did he permit his people to be overcome by their enemies and carried into heathen lands? It was because they had failed to be missionaries and had built walls of division between themselves and the people around them. The Lord scattered them that the knowledge of his truth might be carried to the world. If they were loyal and true and submissive, God would bring them again into their own land. We may awake so too late to be benefited by what we should be doing by now. 1T237.1 Why has God ordained that um, uh, we should have a system of benevolence? 1T237.1 uh, I'll read it from here. Just look from here. I hope you are seeing the screen. I'll highlight it to be different from the yellow so that you may be able to see it. This tithing system I saw will develop character. So the issue of tithing and offering and benevolent, it is geared towards developing character and manifest the true state of the heart. If the brethren in Ohio have this matter presented before them in its true bearing and are left to decide for themselves, they will see wisdom and order in the tithing system. So the tithing system, whether it be offerings, whether it be uh, um, benevolence, it is geared towards developing character and this is the work that we are talking about in Isaiah chapter 58 Acts of Apostle 560 paragraph 2 Acts of Apostle 560.2 this is what we read that um, those who will gain the blessings of sanctification look at that those who will gain the blessing of sanctification must learn the meaning of self-sacrifice the cross of Christ is the central pillar on which hangs the far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. If any man will come after me, Christ said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 2 Corinthians 4.17, Matthew 16.24 
it is the fragrance of our love for our fellow men that reveals our love for God. It is patience in service that brings rest to the soul. It is through humble, diligent, faithful toil that the welfare of Israel is promoted. God upholds and strengthens the one who is willing to follow his way. And so you see the work of giving. The work of giving to fellow men is a fragrance to the Lord. And it will give us the blessings of sanctification. Minister of Healing, page 186, paragraph 2. Minister of Healing, 186, paragraph 2. It says, the consideration for the poor. This arrangement did not, however, only do away with poverty. It was not God's purpose that poverty should wholly cease. It is one of his means for the development of character. The poor, he says, shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. Deuteronomy 15.11 So it is a means for developing character. The last quote I'm reading it comes from... Uh, uh, the book of um, Christ Object Lesson, page 384, paragraph 2. COL uh, 384, paragraph 2. How is character attainment completed? Now, this brother, as we close, if you have not been listening to why we have to do uh, the work of Isaiah chapter 58, now, if you have forgotten what I have said, carry this home. We have said that Isaiah chapter 58 is the right arm of the third angel's message which is justification by faith in verity which is the last message to the world and you cannot separate the right arm from the body so how do we attain a complete character love is the basis of godliness whatever the profession no man has pure love to god unless he has unselfish love for his brother but we can never come into possession of this spirit by trying to love others we can never come to possess the spirit of agape love by trying to love others. No way. The prophet says that it doesn't matter however much you try to love your brother. You will never possess this spirit. So, brothers and sisters, how do we possess the spirit of agape love? What is needed is the love of Christ in the heart. Number one. When self is mine in Christ, love springs forth spontaneously. Number two. Number three. The completeness of Christian character is attained when the impulse to help and bless others springs constantly from within. When the sunshine of heaven fills the heart and is revealed in the countenance. And so there are three things which are so much important in attaining perfection of character. This is the love of Christ in the heart and uh, the merging of self with Christ. And three, the opening wide heart. Now it is attained completely by when it springs from within for you to go out and help others. This is Isaiah 58. This is the message that will bring glory to the church of God. This is the third angel's message in verity, the right arm of the uh, the, the gospel work, the everlasting gospel that has to be done. And so I, I, I do pray that um, our good Lord be with us as even we close up this presentation. I want to say and I want to close with a verse which is so important to me. There are people who think that by helping others they will come poor. But I want to leave you with this verse in Proverbs chapter 11 as we even pray and close up this uh, session, uh, this series. The book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 11, I think it should be from verse 23. 11, 23. Yes. This is the last verses I'm reading. This is the parting shot on the series, the Lateran series, as I finish up this. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, 
and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. That is the last verse I have read in this series. May the good Lord be with us. May he animate our hearts once again so that we may live for him. Let us pray. The good Lord, much has not been given to us because when we pray to get, we pray to satisfy our own souls and our own ones for selfish ambitions. Now, may you help us to crucify self that we may be liberal to others, that we may be fattened. Help us to have the same mind that Christ had, that he did not seek of his own good, but the goodness of others, even leaving heaven, and we know that he will possess glorified humanity forever. He, Lord, lost the divine body because of our iniquity. Help us, Lord, even if it is to lose everything so that others may have something on their tables, on their heads, and on their body. For the work of Isaiah chapter 58. Thank you for the medical missionary work. May you help us establish the work of uh, 1MR 228.2. And may we do this in agape love and not to be seen. They will always continue to be done in our life. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the Lord be with you and uh, continue guiding you. If we don't meet on this earth, help us to, uh, the, the Lord help us so that uh, we may meet in heaven. Uh, I'm striving with the grace of Christ, I have to be there. I'm also praying for you all that you may be there. And I know that um, Christ has called us and he'll never leave us alone to be lost in this world. Shalom.